Good evening. I would like to call to order the March 11, 2019 Hingham School Committee meeting. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised by Harbor Media. Um, and if anyone else is here that intends to audio or video the meeting, can you just let us know? All right, no one's planning to do that. Um, item number two, approval of minutes. Uh, we have minutes of the school committee superintendent finalist interviews held on December 10th and also minutes of the school committee superintendent finalist interviews held on December 17th, 2018. Do I have uh, a? I'll make a motion Thank to you. approve the minutes of the school committee superintendent finalist interviews held on December 10th, 2018. Second. Thank you, Carrie. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee superintendent finalist interviews held on December 17th, 2018. Yep. Second. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Kay. Uh, item number three, questions and comments. Um, the Hingham School Committee encourages community engagement and welcomes questions and comments as agenda items are discussed at the meeting. In addition, we've set aside 15 minutes at the beginning of this meeting for any comments or questions that fall under the purview of the school committee that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, is anyone here tonight with anything to discuss or comment? No? All right, then moving on, superintendent's report. Dr. Gallo. Enrollment report. Yeah, I think this is. <clears throat> so this is the March. <coughs> excuse me, the March one enrollment, and um, unlike the February one enrollment, where the K to twelve enrollment increased by twenty one students in that uh, one prior month, uh, this enrollment K to twelve uh, was down by five students. Um, so that's a good thing, because we were a bit concerned that. Uh, the pace of 21 students a month would be uh, unusual to say the least and not something that would be particularly desired. Uh, so it's five, uh, five students fewer. The number of current kindergarten students is uh, 291, so that was actually up by one student and the others were all pretty much in, in line by, uh, by grade level. Um, so we have 79 um, <coughs> preschool students and that's about typical for this time uh, in the year and usually we get up to 80 to 82 or three by the by the end of the year so this was, was reassuring to know that our prior month's enrollment was unusual and remains <coughs> unusual and that's fine if it uh, if it stays that way Uh, <clears throat> we had some good news uh, the other day. Andy Hoy, uh, Director of Social Studies, sent down the results of the South Shore National History Day competition uh, that had taken place recently. And I think there were a total of, uh, between the middle and the high school, uh, there were a total of uh, 10 students who were honored. Um, and we always have done well in the local and even up through the, the national competition. So this does bode well for that. And this is the news release that he wrote and sent off to the, the paper on this this competition. Great, thank you. Uh, this is a slide that John and I particularly like. This time of year we talk a lot about equity and people who um, are putting together the budget, managing the, the budget. Um, <laughs> talk about equity as well and there are lots of different ways one can measure equity and this is uh, one of them and it's probably a copyrighted picture so it won't be posted on the website right off of here. <laughs> okay <clears throat> John. budget update you want to go right there? All right, yeah, but um, we don't have any, unless um, we don't, Emma's not here tonight, does anybody have any other communications? All right, so, all right, let's move on to 6.1 to hear an update on the administration's proposed preliminary operating budget for fiscal year 20. Which one do you want to do? Okay, yeah, we're going to do the, um, it's operating budget, right? It's the, yes. Um, so this, it's a budget update on where, we, where we're at for the budget. So that would be. Okay. 
Um, can you go back this way, Doc? Mm -hmm. <coughs> go back this way. That's not the document. I think just, there's are there arrows over here. Can you go what, back? What one do you want? I want to get the uh, I want the the budget update okay. discussion. I don't know where I should put. What about this one? That goes back. back. We gotta go this way. <coughs> okay, right here. Budget discussion six one. Here we go. So, <coughs> since the, since the last update, um, there's only been one change. Um, I came. Uh, we have one teacher's extending an LOA uh, leave of absence um, through 2020. So that results in a savings of six thousand four hundred nineteen dollars. So not not much yet, um, but there's still time. I mean, we still have time. Um, you know, typically we will end up getting, you know, additional leaves of absences and perhaps some other resignations and sometimes even some retirements within the next month or so or even before the end of the school year. Um, so the, um, <coughs> you know, we, we, it's, it's um, evident that, you know, we have, um, is that coming up? No. no. It won't open? That won't open in the drive if you double click? Oh, there you go. Okay. I'm setting down at the next page. Just scroll down to the next page. So th this um, provides a, an update on the budget template, and it, I've just added the 6000 into it. So we're at a budget right now for the school committee of 54692639 which is really 5.16. Last time it was 5.18, so the 6000 is uh, representing 0.02%. Um, then the the next uh, the next two uh, the next two sheets are the um, new items that we have incorporated into this budget, and it's a, they're they're all still in this uh, the fifty four six ninety two six thirty nine, um, and the at this at this point I think that. We know what would be good is you know we could have further discussion on those we discussed those last time okay or you know we could still hold them all in reserve we could have additional discussion or we could hold them all in reserve and say you know we want to wait till the next meeting or um, at some point to like decide what we're going to take out right because if you flip can you flip to the um, tracking part dot two more down so actually move back the other way the other way no This this part right here. I know. Um, I so it, yeah. we have a gap. Um, the advisory committee and selectmen voted fifty four million three nineteen eight twenty six. So what we have for a gap right now is three hundred seventy two thousand uh, uh, eight hundred and twelve. Now between now and, and budget time, we won't make up all those differences just on mm -hmm. you know um, personnel changes that occur. So it's evident we will have to reduce this budget um, by some of the the new items um, that we had incorporated. And you know that's there. We can we could do some of that tonight if we so prefer it, or we could delay. Um, and I would leave that up to the committee if you wanted to ponder that. Do you want to start discussing? I think we should. I don't see why we should delay it. I agree. And then maybe prioritize what we'd put back in if, if, we, if we get more. Found more savings. Mm hmm. Um, right. Could you always have the meeting at the, uh, you know, the one just before town meeting as well, where we could, you know, take more aggressive action um, as to, you know, what, what we take out? Um, the you know the key is I, I think that this budget we we should be able to reduce enough to get to this budget I mean you you know um, I'm sure that the committee knows that there's items on the budget that you know you'd be willing to reduce um, to make up the gap of three hundred seventy nine thousand dollars alternatively what we, what you could do is you could take a budget vote sort of agree on the number and you know uh, commit to making the number but allow some more time to go by so. That I will leave up to the committee. What do folks think? 
I mean, we could agree to, to John's point to the we could commit that we will meet match the adcom and board of selectmen recommended dollar figure and then wait for more news over the next couple of weeks um to get into the line rather than go through the line items right now I mean, I said before that if we take something out it won't go back right it would be very hard for it to go back even if money were available because essentially you would be saying this is not a high priority we're willing right. to give it up mm -hmm. so but if there's someone here that you're totally adverse you know that not not adverse but say we don't need um, those could come out but you know it, it doesn't hurt to wait and to take them all at once knowing that we're going to you know but make the gap work isn't the point to sort of agree to a number yes and then as things shift around, mm -hmm. we can still yeah. say, mm -hmm. okay, as you know, if there's funds available, we can bring these things back in. It's, it's, sure, we we're committing to a number for town meeting, is mm -hmm. the priority, if I, and and it's a number, and then we want to share with the community what that number gets itemized to, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Yeah. But then if something gets freed up within the number we can still shift things around yeah okay yeah. yeah makes sense to me yeah. we vote on the, uh, the number on the number and then work and then on the itemization yeah. you've done that for years right yeah. okay all right that's the number i mean the number is the number that's right yeah, yeah. Okay. right okay yeah. okay all right looks like we have consensus to do that um Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that the school committee approves a budget for fiscal year 20 for the operating budget of 54,319,826 in concurrence with the Board of Selectmen and Advisory Committee votes. I'll second. Great. Um, any discussion? No? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. Thank you, John and Dot. Thank you so much for yeah, all your work. You. This was a, a little bit of stressful <laughs> budget I think season, I think, but it was good. A little bit more time, I mean, because you know, in another couple of weeks, I think you know, some something may happen. Yeah. Um, well, know. for example, we should know <clears throat> by the end of the month we should have a pretty good handle on uh, the kindergarten and whether or not right. we need that additional teachers one uh, thing you know, in particular that we're waiting yeah. to find out. Depending on energy prices, I may end up locking in on some gas or some diesel, and that could that could save you know a few dollars. Um, they tend to be fluctuating. They were going down, you know, was a little tweak up, but um, you know, right now the prices are below budget. But I don't necessarily want to lock in right now. Um, you know, for fear that they make them down a little bit more, and you you know, there's a lot of gallons there. So every time you save a, a nickel or a dime on a gallon, it can add up to several thousand dollars. So. It's a crapshoot, but and then when do we, we keep an eye on it. On the secondary course selections the is selections that May, usually or? the first week in May. Although we may be able to do it a week early this year, because just the way the the year started and and uh, um, when they did the simple tallies, had selected things and did the simple tallies, it's about a week ahead. And of course, school was ending early. We hope. And so we will know the, all of those numbers, all of the K to 12 uh, numbers that that week. Because that's a big chunk of mm -hmm. the movement. Yep. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, did you have a question, Libby? Oh, sorry. Libby, did you have a question? I don't know if this is an appropriate question right now. If you want to answer it later, that's fine. But it's specifically about the computer science line item for five thousand dollars or the advanced placement consumer science. Mm -hmm. If kids are supposed to be choosing now their classes, how can this be offered now if we don't even know that it's going to be in the budget for them to take next year? I no. think that's the date that Liza was asking about. Is that okay? So it's offered, but we have to see if there's enough kids that sign up for it. Sign up for it. Mm -hmm. And then if they do we have to 
we have to choose whether we mm -hmm. offer it or so they if we the find the funds for it. The process of deciding yes or no to that particular class and then would it all potentially uh, find out that they can't actually take it. And that could, I don't know, shift. Well, well but it really happens during that first week in May or if we can move it back to the uh, um, the last week in April because the tally will have been done but we have to know how many FTEs every department needs because we'll end up with a certain number of FTEs and we'll have to live within that so if there were five kids that signed up and uh, there were no other shortages of, of staffing that would be one thing but if we've got three different departments who each could use a teacher, a one class, there's the point six that we may or may not have. Mm -hmm. So it's not just knowing how many sections we need, it's knowing what do we have over here as a pool of FTEs to divide up among the different departments and what do we have over here for uh, courses that kids want or in some cases need, in some cases an elective that they want. So when is our um, when is our the school committee's deadline for finalizing the budget? Well, we're, we're committing to a number, so we usually wait until after that first week in May. Then we know pretty much the kindergarten is is pretty much closed. Or the okay. registrations are in, okay. and all of the grade levels during that week. Um, Jamie and I meet with the two secondary principals and one by one all the department heads and resource teachers and we divvy up the FTEs we okay. have in need. Right. And we do the same thing at the elementary. We meet with the four elementary principals and they bring a draft of what they think they need for, uh, for their building and we know how many FTEs we have there and we divvy those up as well. So, so after that week we have a pretty good sense of how many kids for each um, each grade level, K to 12. And between now and then, Libby will continuously give you updates on you know what 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 changes have occurred and stuff. And um, you know it's it, it it gets down to a point where we're committing to a number, so we're going to have to make that number. So um, probably that time in May, we'll say okay, here's another recommendation on how we get to the number because the budget book has to be will be snapped early this year. Well, I'll, I'll take a, a snapshot of the budget book early this year. I have to take it um, early. I want to make sure the new superintendent has, you know, all the numbers um, at his disposal when he, when he gets here. So um, sometimes I've been able to <clears throat> take the, you know, we we know where the where it's going to be, but I don't actually have the budget book prepared. Okay. You know, we wait for the we and we make sure that all the we have new hiring take place. So this year, a lot of new hiring won't be incorporated into the budget. Um, they'll all be sort of variant, so we'll just manage that through the year. And it could be that there's a course that some don't want to take, and then we use that FTV to shift. Right. But we have waited until late May even mm -hmm. to do the final itemization to the number voted at town meeting to make it all right. fit in balance. Yeah. So it will be in balance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah. we will be in doubt. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That, HR that has never on. left my list. <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> you better be there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, any other questions on that? All right. Um, All right. So we did 6.2. Um, right. We acted as appropriate and approved the budget number so item seven is new business um, to hear an update and forecast for the fiscal year 19 operating budget so that's um, in your packets John's budget update for the current school year so um, yeah, I put that in the packet hopefully everybody had it over the weekend so you had a chance to reading um, you know what um, the projecting right now um, a, a budget deficit till to new uh, June 30th and that projection I'm coming out with is two hundred twenty two thousand fifty one dollars okay negative um, 
and what what that projection represents is really we there's over 500 sub accounts that make up the summary level matrix that you all see okay and you know through that we take a look at each one of those individual sub accounts and we look at the the way the spending has trended and then also um, what the amounts that are encumbered in the, that um, that account and we look at it and we try to analyze it. We do a lot of research, account inquiry, see how the spending's been, what we've been spending on, identify if those seem to be normal spending or whether there's something extraordinary and whether we think that there's going to be additional spending between now and the end of the year or actually whether some of those encumbered amounts are actually going to reduce. So this, this budget forecast, what we have in right now is you're looking at 55% of actuals are in. 41% to 41 to 42 percent are actually encumbered amounts. So encumbered amounts are actually amounts that, you know, we've we've like authorized purchase orders or we think that payroll spending is going to develop there because we know everybody on the payroll. Um, we have a number of hourly employees such as paras and bus drivers and custodians. Um, so, you know, that we don't have encumbrances in, then, in for them, so we make other forecasts to project them out to the end of the year. So. Um, <clears throat> you have, you know, so you, what, what this represents 55% actuals, 41% encumbered amounts, and then about 3% are additional amounts that we've forecasted over and above what's encumbered now. Um, okay, so that we can kind of project out where we come up to the end of the year. And then when we add all of those up, uh, that's where I'm projecting this negative $222,051. Okay. This time of year, when I see a number like that, I get a little bit um, concerned. Okay, because it's, it's a large number. So the really important thing is that I make sure that that number does not grow between now and the end of the year, okay? So um, it, 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 that's a definitely a, a manageable amount because I know at the end of the year we'll typically have a lot of purchase orders close out. Some of those encumbered amounts really don't develop. Some of the hourly amounts actually get changed because there's, there's people that they don't return. We end up using the sub in lieu of the employee. Um, there's just a lot of movement that will occur between now and the end of the year. And a significant amount of dollars can actually drop off. Okay, and plus two, we'll have some, um, you know, small monies in grants that we actually want to con continue to spend down. So right now, that's a, that's a manageable number. But as I said, um, I don't want the number to grow anymore between now and the end of the year. So I've actually implemented essential only spending across the district. I told everybody, you know, there's no more spending, no more purchase orders, that I'm going to scrutinize everything and that they'll be rejecting a number of purchase orders. Because when you get that 222000 there's this combination of those things, right? Some of the line items already show a positive variance. Okay, so I want to make sure that those poor positive variants s sort of stay there so I can't, you know, go beyond that spending because ultimately the whole thing has to balance out. You know, with the big driver of the, of the negative variances is special education spending. Um, you know, we're, we're over in contract services, um, you know, on, on the sheet that I, I've provided, um, you know, I show the, the typical thing, not the typical things, but uh, a brief explanation of what the major drivers are of the negative variances. Um, you know, you can see in special education contract services about $102,000 negative projected right now. Now there's a, there's a balance in there, an expended amount, and there's purchase orders in there too, encumbered amounts. Um, the thing is you'd like to say, okay, those incumbent amounts won't develop, but you know, they may develop, and I, and I think that's a reasonable figure. Okay, um, we have like contract transportation. Um, that's really for uh, vendors providing uh, contract services. You know, showing uh, a negative of 38. We've gotten better on that from you know where it was last year, and um, <coughs> we have uh, unbudgeted tuitions. There's sort of been a mix between collaboratives and privates. So you know, when you change that mix from collaboratives to privates, you end up being a little bit more negative than. Um, in intuitions than, than you might anticipate. So also I've sort of summarized, you know, what those major components are. So you see regular reds actually run in positive about 68, 550, 566, and um, Votex positive nine, $9,393. And we still have capital, but capital doesn't weigh, capital will expend all of our capital. Um, but, it, you know, they, they put it onto the operating budget, but we're looking at 
the variances down below, you see capital showing positive right now of 960.23, but I'll use that, and that the overall operating budget is negative to 222.051. Um, okay. Um, when I look at the variances, I try to give you a, a comment of what the major driver is for those items that are over $10,000. You know, it, it, it is a $55 million budget. When you look at the uh, couple hundred thousand, it's 2% uh, or, you know, so it's still not a bad number, um, you know, relative to budget, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's high and we don't want to make sure, you know, we don't want it to run away from us. Um, energy, we've been fortunate so far. Energy is, is doing fairly well, okay. Um, but we have recently just had a rate increase by Plymouth River, uh, not Plymouth River, by the electric company. You know, they, they moved one of their components up like one and a half pennies. Uh, and there's a lot of kilowatts out there, right? So it's one and a half pennies on a kilowatt, and when you get a million of those, they end up being, you know, adding up. So we're showing positive numbers right now for energy, but um, it's, it's, you know, some of that, I'm hopeful that the weather will continue to cooperate with us and that, you know, we won't be using so much because a little bit of that um, price differential is going to soak up some of the um, benefit that I would have anticipated getting from energy. And in, in maintenance, there you'll see some negatives in maintenance. Maintenance has a lot of open purchase orders and I, I'm hesitant to close those out or to reduce those right now because you know, uh, until I get into big trouble on a budget, I want to allow them to continue spending prudently because if we defer plant maintenance, there's, you're just going to end up with a backlog. So, um, so they've been, they've, they've had the essential spending only alert as well, but, you know, I, I haven't backed off some of their open purchase orders, which they say, you know, I could back some of those off for you right now. So I, that's where I know I can make this number manageable and we can get, you know, to zero, but I don't want to take that away yet because as we proceed through the year, you know, there'll be other changes. We get better visibility when more actuals get in and we can measure things. So, um, you know, overall, a very tight budget year, but certainly manageable and um, the, 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 the plant is stable, um, the, the workforce is stable. You're, doesn't there's there's nothing that I see on the horizon that's not projected in here that is going to be you know problematic so um, that's what we said right now I don't I don't anticipate that there'd be a lot of money left over at the end of the year even if you know even if some of the, the these things do drop off I don't think there'd be money for you know a special ed reserve um, transfer of any significance put it that way okay you know, I do expect at the end of the year it's going to be zero or there's going to be a few dollars left. It will be. I can guarantee that because it has to be. I can't be negative. And we're not going for any reserve fund transfer, so. Questions? Happy to answer any questions. Questions? Okay, unbudgeted tuitions. Are those for kids that go out of district that wasn't planned or what are they come stemming from um, yeah they're coming from they're, uh, kids that were the um, they were sort of like um, um, kids that were not there or we, we didn't have knowledge over they were I like already out but um, they're you know settlements and um, but they weren't new kids coming into our district that went they, no no no, okay. no they were kids that were in the, they, were, they were outside the district, but it's basically, um, you know, settlements on the, on the tuitions. So they weren't, I actually have a similar question. So they, it wasn't that they were at the collaborative and they switched to a different placement? We, no, we've had some of that too. Yeah, no, okay. there's been some of that, that as well, where the, their placements have, sh have shifted. So we've had visibility of them, but their placements where we thought they were going to be a collaborative, they ended up in a, in a private. Okay. And would our reserve fund um, cover these kinds of situations if we needed to? Um, so the the reserve fund could cover, um, I, I the, the, the wording f in that reserve fund says unanticipated and therefore unbudgeted. So those specific students 
we didn't have budget dollars set aside for. Um, but so not necessarily unanticipated. No, because that's why I'm saying the language in that fund, the language governing how it can be expended, says that they are for tuitions that are unanticipated at the time we do the budget, obviously, uh, and therefore unbudgeted. Right, but if a child moves from the collaborative to a different <coughs> school, that might not have been anticipated nor budgeted. Well, that, that's true. Um, right. I mean, I, I, the, I, just I, that I, particular situation, would then the yeah. reserve fund cover that? Well, I think with the placement K, I'd have a hard time with that. I mean, in my own mind, I would have a hard time if I knew about the student and it just went here as opposed to there. That's... Yeah, I mean, sure, we didn't anticipate that we're going to be in, in a private school as opposed to the collaborative, but that's an ebb and flow. That's sort of a normal thing that happens all the time, you know, within the realm of special ed. I always sort of interpreted that as here's a, here's a new student that came in post-budget or, you know, we're, we're in the budget process now, and I know there's a couple of students out there that may be placed next year. But we already have a number, and I'm not going to add them into this number. So those types of students, if we end up paying a tuition for them next year, then I would suggest that the special ed reserve would fit for those people. The, these other students, we've, we've had them sort of on the radar, but we just didn't have placements for them. So um, I, I, I view it as a little bit different. You know, it's not like something that was, uh, you know, brand new. Yeah, and we, you know, we had a, a committee, a, a school town committee that was put together. Selectmen uh, nominated people to be on it, and the people on it were uh, some former um, members of the Board of Selectmen uh, and some former, Ed was here, was on that committee at that time. and. We definitely didn't talk about kids moving from uh, either collaborative to uh, private or, or vice, vice versa. We specifically talked about the kinds of students that we uh, designed that fund for. And they were students like the three that in that year had moved into the district and we inherited them for the following year in um, in January when we had already just put the budget to bed so to speak our recommended budget and we were all of a sudden short nearly half a million dollars and so when we put the committee together it was to deal with that kind of totally unexpected thing um, what about a unilateral well, th some of these students can result from a unilateral placement. Yeah. That's a very common route, if you will, for parents to um, put the, a, a child in the school that they have in mind. And so they may do that and then come back to us and say, we may not know at the time, but come back to us and say, you know, um, we want to meet with you because um, we're going to ask you to pay for this. Right. Could we use the special education reserve fund for those? Um, I'm, I'm a little bit know. hesitant I, I, on that one too, Carrie. To from that those what I know of it, yeah. they are unbudgeted typically. Right. Mm. The uh, the other thing I should mention on this too, and I apologize, I didn't say this before, but I, so on some of these categories and the negative variances. I try to smooth some stuff out, okay? Because sometimes we, we we might have booked some of these tuitions to because they, they weren't paid to a school to contract services, and I may have moved them and said, okay, well that's really a private, but it's so so there's been um, to I, I smooth the things out so that I I sort of show you know what the reality what I what I think the reality of the accounting is because certainly those settlements in, in contract services don't make sense. Because it's not, it's for tuitions that we're actually paying. So sort of they will move down. So um, <coughs> you have to keep that in mind that some of the numbers on here have actually, you know, moved. But I think they're representative of what the picture is. Okay. Um, so then is the transportation increase related to the increase in private placements? I think that's an, I think that transportation increase, Liza, is, um, 
just a constant, un, you know, under budgeting that which I've okay. been trying to catch up with, okay. you know, over the, over the years. But but this okay. fund and, can be used for and, transportation. Yeah, and some of that yeah, probably will drop so. off. I hope that some of the trans because we have a lot of purchase orders out there for transportation, okay. and at the end of the year, many times a, a little bit of it drops off. Like even now, we'll have a schedule of transportations that we anticipate. And then I, I'll sort of look at the numbers and stuff and say, okay, for the budget, let's take, you know, I, I think this year I said let's take 95% of it or let's even reduce it further because it was up around 600000 I said, I want to go there. So I might have reduced it down to 505 So I'd have to go back and look at my notes and see how I did it because okay. – that's fine. And, and plus, too, we don't want to go up to the extreme all the time yeah. because we need to, you know, um, move slowly, and okay. we don't want to have a whole bunch of money taken away if, if we're not going to use it. And then on contract services, I know you said you were moving some things around, but is that also related to more students requiring additional services or more services required per student? Is there like an increase in contract services that we're providing? From a dollar from a dollar standpoint, there is. But yeah, I'm just I'm just I trying to know. get a yeah I don't know like a sense of what's going on. Um, so when I first came in, there were a number of students who um, were not able to receive related services like speech and occupational therapy because the caseloads were larger than our current staff could handle. Um, so in order to be in compliance with the students and make sure that they got the services they required, I had to contract um, services for those things. Uh, so that's why there's a, a higher amount in contracted service, mainly for um, behavior analyst, um, speech pathology, and occupational therapy. Okay. And then mm -hmm. my last question. So since we're finding these now, mm -hmm. are these Gonna, are these reflected in the fiscal 20 mm -hmm. budget? Yes. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll make it all work in the bottom mm -hmm. line. Um, mm -hmm. It's fine mm -hmm. that you know, I'm glad we're being able to provide the services mm -hmm. to the students that need the services. So. Yeah, we, I have to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, one note about transportation, just so that you know, is that sometimes when we have children in foster care and they're, they might be moving around a bit and we are responsible for them, um, sometimes their transporting may change from one town to another town, um, and then the distance might increase. And so, as John is saying, it's not a it's 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 very dynamic um, and changing. But it's it's not. Um, I want to make sure that you know that there's students out there who have difficult situations and changing uh, programming that requires transportation. And so sometimes it's up and down. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we still believe that we can uh, save some money by doing those routes? Oh, that yeah. there still are at least three that. Yes. Yep. And it's uh, the um, <clears throat> we're actually doing a, a, another route. We we still have the spare um, wheelchair van that we haven't sold yet, and we have a student. So we're going to be we will provide some transportation to that student at East to East School. For, you know, between now and the end of the year. Or so. Um, you know, it's more cost effective, so we're doing what we can to mitigate transportation expenses. Thank you. I know you are just trying to make sure I understand. Yeah. That that's no, right. no, no, I know, right, yeah. right. No, I, I, I know. Well, it's well, these, well, these are big numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the, of the special education schools uh, aren't on the South Shore. Um, and so that also um, increases the amount of mileage that that is. <laughs> Part of transportation. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No? And there's, there's tons of detail here. So if anybody ever wants any more detail, you know, you ask me, I'll get you whatever you want. I know. Mortified. I'm trying to summarize the best <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah. It's not, it's a, it's fairly complicated, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, it's uh, this, this budget is certainly manageable. We'll certainly be fine come the end of the year. Um, but I have, in fact, you know, issued essential spending only uh, directive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll do that at least for a couple of months. I think by May, I'll have May 1st or so, I'll have, you know, better visibility. We'll get a good picture of what the actuals are really looking like. And we'll know good, very well, you know, what we have left for payrolls for the, for the rest of the year. And then, you know, that still gives us a couple of months. So if there's things that we have to get done, we could, you know, make sure that we get them done. 
but in any event all kids will have everything that they need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know and you know that, that's those are the things that we will continue to authorize whatever the kids need so um, don't want you to think we're just boom there's no spending there there'll, there'll be plenty of spending between now and the end of the year it's just it's going to be very prudent and it's going to be watched over very closely okay. thank you all right great thanks very much for that john um seeing no other questions um we can move on to 7.2 um it's a homeschool application um in your packets family to him and there are five children and all of them are homeschooled. No relationship between those five children and the five fewer children we have. <laughs> uh, and, and the backup uh, with the actual uh, plans is uh, on the table for those who would like to look at it. So do we have to vote on this? this? Um, yes, I think we still okay. are voting on those. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the homeschool application of the Grissom children, Sierra grade 11, Stephen grade 9, Shelby grade 7, Sadie grade 5, and Susanna grade 3 for the 2018-2019 school year. Second. Everybody good? All, of, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Um, and then item 7.3 is to receive notification of the appointments of Lisa Dinan, paraeducator at Hingham High School. So congratulations to Lisa. 48 hours. Does anyone have any 48 hours items to bring up? No? All right. Um, so subcommittee and project reports. Why don't we start with community outreach? Okay, so I apologize. Um, thought Jamie might be here. We discussed at our last um, community outreach meeting the website proposals. We did get a couple of them in. And they're kind of, I'd say, um, there's wide ranges. There's also wide ranges of services. I meant to bring my notes with me, and I did not, so I can update the next meeting. But I want to say it was around 30000 Does that sound right, yeah. Libby and Carrie? Yeah. That would probably be the high. Um, and there's also some um, firms they offer what I guess you would call subscriptions mm -hmm. so um, you would be paying basically a yearly fee um, which might sound less but then again it's a subscription so it would be a reoccurring cost um, the general consensus though of the committee I believe was to just kind of get a sense of what this committee wants to do but also find out what our superintendent Paul would like to do get him involved um, so I don't think we were uh, going to make any proposals to the committee um, at this time but it would be something to consider if we needed to budget so didn't we have something in the capital budget we do yeah, it was thirty thousand dollars was it thirty thousand yes you said we also included in there no, 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 they didn't, but that's where, you know, we'll, we, we will go back and, um, you know, we'll start doing that on the 25th and maybe we'll get to the, the end line. Um, you know, we can decide that that's a priority and move that and, and bump something else. So that's, I mean, that's just, the, that's just what we have to do, Libby, because they, I mean, I think, they, I think the list that they provided, I mean, they, they got a lot of, you know they hit our priorities in in very many places so I mean I think that that's good you know a couple of things that I uh, you know I was concerned with one thing on this might have been the, um, the the dump truck you know they, they postponed that but we're spending fifteen thousand dollars a year to repair the one that we have so you know that may have to be you know some movement but um, will we we will end up moving some dollars but I think we'll try to trade you know that's really the school committee's prerogative okay we need that we know best what's um, what the district needs so if that's a priority then we could prioritize it but we also said that we were going to collect some other information and also get some information from uh, dr. Austin about you know right. what he thinks about mm -hmm. websites mm -hmm. and, and uh, 
you know, does he have recent experience? Is it a high priority? Would it be a priority that would be a challenge from the first year or whatever? Mm -hmm. And we said that we would get some uh, information from South Shore superintendents about what particular ones um, a number of people are using. And the Blackboard one was one that uh, was. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we did get a quote. So that was we got about something, five or six different something reports. else. So. So we have some more information. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, he'll have the, so um, another reason to even uh, well to ask about his experience doing a website is um, we're going to have to I guess find out a, a process yeah. because we're going to have to reach out to teachers and you know. Um, all different kinds of staff members about what do they want to see on the website and then we're gonna have to get the feedback it's gonna be time asked of our staff and teachers students okay. so um, it'd be great to get his experience and his feedback on how they did it yeah. so um, so we didn't plan for our next date the other thing that the community outreach has been working on and um, I want to give a big thanks to Carrie because she really put the draft together and then we um, all three edit it um, and try to put something so that we can put it out in the public but we need to get everyone's eyes on it including yours um, mm -hmm. Carrie did send an email around to everyone so they had it in advance of this meeting yeah. you know do you have more questions that you want to have answered that maybe we didn't um, cover what is the general impression of it so what it is is a for the audience is a frequently asked question document on foster school we'd like to put it up on our website and um, basically to help answer a lot of questions what is an SOI what does the MSBA do um, what does the building um, committee do what is their role in this so it's just very basic questions mm -hmm. but I think it does help um, people understand the foster situation we also have a fact sheet of all the things that have been occurring at foster um, a lot of the recent improvements done at foster so um, we just want to know is are there any things that you guys want to have added or removed from this document <coughs> <laughs> like, I, and I think it's a, an yeah, excellent really start. Great. Um, and I made some edits, which I will give you guys, um, and I can send you my Word document. Um, some things I just sort of moved around. Um, and I thought it would be good if instead of starting with Warren Article A, we started with a question of why is Foster School considered the highest priority capital project for Hingham? And then um, give the background, the basic background of the building. So I, I look at these of how do you tell this the basic story, um, and then and I think you had as I was editing through, I realized you had uh, why renovate or replace Foster. So that was similar to what then I had written. But I'll give all of this to you. And then I had the next question is what actions are the school committee or is the school committee taking to address the problems? And um, that was some more the background of in 2017, 2018, we did this. And then um, we didn't get accepted. So we submitted a third SOI. And then we're submitting the warrant article for town meeting um, then and then I moved the what is Warren article AA further down um, then I kept your question about what is the role of the MSBA what are the advantages of working with the MSBA what is statement of interest um, then the MSBA process has changed so that there is first an eligibility period and then a feasibility period. So I added what happens if the MSBA approves the SOI as a question. And then I copied and pasted in the eligibility period part so that that's, so that's there. there. And then 
I added what is the feasibility study prep phase as the next question. I took that sentence from the MSBA website and then kept going with what is a feasibility study. Um, and then um, you had what if our third SOI is not accepted by the MSBA? Um, I think that should be very brief because, um, you know, we talked about why we were even pulling the Warren article and, and also we don't know what is going to happen after that. So I think we should, that we should just leave as, I, mean, I wrote, if our third SOI is not accepted based on past few years, you left that, that this was your sentence. Based on the past few years, we will likely know in December of 2019, the school committee, and then I wrote, will immediately reassess all options for the building, including working with the Board of Selectmen and Advisory Committee on considerations of exploring the possibility of renovating or replacing Foster. Be and just leave it at that, because we, no one knows. Well, we didn't want to go into it either. Yeah. So those um, discussions all still need to take place. Yeah. So I think that was my only major concern of this. Um, and then I left what is article AA? Why is the school committee proposing this article? Um, Can we just go back to the slides? Yeah. Why it's not accepted. In our last meeting, didn't we talk about having a special town meeting? Potentially, yes. Yeah. Yep. So if we didn't get accepted, I, I, it just feels like I, I I hear what you're saying. It just feels like it, it's kind of watering it down a bit to be like we're going to talk to the advisory committee and the selectmen to explore the possibility of maybe you know I, I think I mean this what we what we wrote here kind of talks about there are actually advantages to going it alone, you know, and it's it cha it saves on time and it saves some money because the construction costs are going up every year. So it seems like that's not a bad thing to put out there in the community either. But we also talked about focusing on the MSBA mm -hmm. and not showing our hand to the MSBA of, and honestly, I, I've been getting some feedback from people like, I don't know if the Board of Selectmen are going to go for, you know, we just, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. My only thought with this so part is, which I agree with you, and I understand why you're putting it in here. I sort of feel like that is like a whole other set of frequently asked questions, like almost its own topic. You right. know what I mean? The that next steps. Yeah, sort right. of like yeah. next well, steps. We talked that about that. It was difficult to talk about because we all felt like we needed to have the next steps in there, but that's hard to do because we haven't agreed on right. what we're yeah. going to do. Right. Um, but I don't know. I just I don't want to hedge that much. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I, my only concern is the showing our hand piece of it. Um, when do you want to? When do you want to get this up? First of all, I think that's a valid point because um, we do want to put this up on our website. Yeah, that so I, honestly, I understand why we put it in, but now I'm also hearing. A valid explanation of why maybe we shouldn't. So, um. and I need it by Thursday night for the middle school PTO meeting. I don't know if there's anything else. Well, I, before that, I mean, I I have Foster School PTO meeting on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And I was intending on just telling them we're working on this so that we can we will be able to communicate better to the community. But um, I mean, you know, of all people who would want this. They're going to want it, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I respect that you know this is our work, and if it's not done, it's not done. So right, um, I, I we don't would let them know this. as soon as it's done. So it needs to be um, well, and it can also. I mean, it could be. I mean, clearly, it could be a document that's updated. Right, we'll have weekly, to do that. <laughs> yeah. right? If, yeah. if right. need be, right? As mm -hmm. new information comes along, and we get more. With town meeting coming up, right? Yes, we want to get this right yeah. because we want to get mm -hmm. the article finalized. Double A, right? So done um, here because we need that. We need people to um, focus 
and get people to the town meeting for the article that is in there for the capital maintenance. Um, so, but we haven't um, made a date for our next meeting. Right. So we can um, sit back together, take a look at Liza's edits, mm -hmm. rediscuss it. Um, yeah, I mean, from just what she's given so far, I think that those all make sense. Yep. Like, it, to right. Put the yeah. story up front. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think that those all make sense. My one concern is with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, my suggestion would be let's get the majority of these up there as a document, like as soon as possible, particularly around the $350,000, because that is definitely going to the um, a warrant article at the town meeting. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, if it's okay, then we can still talk about the next mm -hmm. step piece of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, the one other thing is under, I do not have a student at Foster, why should I care? Um, I added a sentence. Um, East School was built in 2008 due to an extreme overcrowding in Hingham's elementary schools. Or two, two sentences. The elementary school population has maintained the enrollment numbers since four schools were in operation. Three sentences. <laughs> Sorry. Without Foster School, Hingham would face the same over enrollment problems as it did 10 years ago. Um, and then the reputation of our excellent school district is what supports <coughs> our high property values. But I, I think that's really critical yeah. Yeah. of really explaining to people that if it's gone, we're back to the way we were 10 years ago, which right. nobody wanted. So, um, that is. so th that was my, so I think, and I great think, start. Yeah. Um, I think I just had a couple of things on the, what can I do as well? Um, cause you have to go to town meeting. Um, and vote. Um, I think could we just expand that a little bit more, like to re like get your friends together, pick up your neighbor, talk about the Warren article with your with your friends, with your neighbors, get people to town meeting, carpool, because I think you just can't hammer that part of it home enough. Particularly this particular Warren article that we need two thirds of the majority to get this passed, and so we need people who are supportive of this Warren article um, to be at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just reminding people, like, you need to get people there, yourselves and other people. Do you want me to send you some, or can you? I mean, we could you know take out right. the whole MSBA process from this and just do, for now, just do frequently asked questions, like the background of Foster School and Warren article double A. And like then, that was and then, like, well, you can keep adding stuff on because yeah. I mean, for because yeah. for right now, for yeah, the next for right 30 now. days, yeah. what we need is people to come to town meeting to vote on article double okay. A, right? To vote on this article because we don't have any Warren article on the table for the rebuild or renovation or remodeling, right? right? So that's actually not a bad idea, and we should get some more. Um, we should be get, getting some more information over the next couple of weeks too, particularly as John prepares the SOI that might give us some more texture to add on here. So that whole MSBA process and what do we do if we don't, and that we could just save that to put up at a later time. So as far as educating the community though, don't you think it's a good idea to, because we, we talked about with, with the meeting at Foster that we had. Yeah. Like, parents didn't understand what the process was. So it, I think it's important to have what's the MSBA, what's an SOI, what's a feasibility study, all because we're, we're talking about it. So yeah. it's helpful for people to know. Well, but even like put that up in two weeks or in so that. But why not put it up now? I if we can, if we can right. get it done, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah. But if that's going to hold us up, get the other parts out. Because that and was the majority of the questions at that meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But True. A lot of parents just don't understand. Well, I mean, process. it sounds like I mean it's ninety-five percent there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So put that yeah. up. The only piece is the next step piece that we can work on, and we may get some more information as we go through the process with the SOI being submitted and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? And yeah, we'll get that makes sense. And get mm -hmm. it up now. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Come on. You gotta just come okay. to the microphone and. State your name <laughs> and address. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Emily Dowell, 40 Elm Street in Hingham. My kids are at Foster. Um, so this is awesome. I think this is what we need 100%. People have questions. They don't know how to get answers. Um, 
And I think a lot of people don't even know what a Warren article is. I think people that don't vote, that don't go to town meeting and don't vote and aren't active in the community and don't come to these meetings literally have no idea what goes on at town meeting, what's talked about, and that's, you know, that might sound horrifying, but these are smart, educated people, but they just don't have time. They're moms, they're dads, they're working, they're a million miles a minute, they think everybody else is going to do this work for them. And I think not only this information, but what is a Warren article? What does it mean? What do you need to know about it? What does it mean if you don't go to town meeting? What does it mean if you do? And I know, like, but I think that's really helpful, too, because so many people, I mean, this is all mumbo jumbo to a lot of people right, so no um, that's I great. think that's really important and I think this is is huge I think a lot of more conversation and people are gonna get really um, really behind this a lot more and I especially love like why should I care if my kids are not at foster um, I think that's really important so and is this something that's just gonna be available on the website or is it gonna be distributed through the schools so I think it would be First of us, first of all, we know all these questions are going to come, and we can all be giving the same message. Yeah. Um, so if Libby's attending a PTO meeting and that question's asked, it's um, going to be the same answer that I'm going to give if I'm at South. Um, but it would be nice to be able to distribute it. People can print it out, yeah. and um, but definitely have it up on the website so yeah. it's always there as reference. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. I think. I mean, I could see a bunch of us. Um, you know, printing this out and, and talking to groups of friends, trying to get, you know, coffee talks together and things because people just do not understand what they need to do. I think if everybody knew, they'd sign up in, in droves to show up. But, so, so. are you the, the leader um, at Foster? For oh, I don't want to take that <laughs> on, but, um, you know, it's important. Yeah. I am um, very disappointed. You know, we chose to move to Hingham because of the schools, and now we're talking about moving out of town because um, we, we have two years left at Foster and we're not comfortable keeping our kids there. Um, you know, I'm looking at this and I see environmental concerns and, you know, we have friends, horrible stories of them growing up and having residual health effects from growing up in a school, kind of similar to this. Um, so, you know, again, we moved here because it's a great school system and, and everything and now we're kind of like, should we, should, we, should we move houses? Should we move out of town? Should we, you know, take out 50 mortgages so we can send them to private school? I mean, this is just really... Well, and part of the reason, though, for this information sheet is to ensure people that Foster is a safe school and we're keeping it up and running. Um, the kids are going to be educated and continue to receive the services that they're receiving so that they don't have these fears of... Is it safe for my kid to go to school? Yes, it is. I think you're going to get people concerned. I mean, I, I don't think you can hide this by any means, but there are some things in there, like when I was trying to read it, that are alarming that I think a lot of people don't know. So I would just be ready for more, as I'm sure you are, but ready for more questions because there's a lot there that you're like, oh, my God, right. I had no idea that there was no natural light or that there was water in the walls or you know whatever it might be. So. Um, but being, people need to know, so that's the only way they're going to get out on the boat. So, yeah. and all this information came from the mass, the original 2005 master plan, and then from the SOI that we submitted yeah. most recently. So, yeah. So and and I want to say that um, having been a um, substitute teacher for six years in and I went from kindergarten through twelfth grade, I was in all of the schools all the time, mm -hmm. and um, I never noticed any difference in the level of teaching in, in foster para southeast whatever it didn't matter where I was it was always stellar and nobody was outwardly aware of their physical surroundings the kids didn't matter the teachers were on point and focused on them all the time and they're getting an amazing education at foster Right. I agree with that, but I think as time goes on, that's changing a little bit. Um, kids, I mean, my kids are coming home, like, it was 100 degrees in the class today, or, you know, we had to go to the library, we were in the middle of a math lesson, and we had to put it all down and go to the library because I don't know what happened. But, so I think kids are definitely starting to notice because the problems are bigger than what they might have been 
two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, um, they're becoming more obvious and they are impacting the kids on a more daily basis. Um, I'm not taking away, the teachers do an amazing job. We've heard from all the teens, all these different meetings, teachers have come and said, we do what we can, we're here to, you know, do what, take the kids to the library, we do whatever we can, but it is definitely the kids are starting to be like, what is going on? Especially when they play sports with kids at other schools and, I mean, even, it doesn't sound like a third grader or a fifth grader or whatever would have these types of conversations, but they do. I don't think we give the kids enough credit. They're smart. They talk to their friends like, oh my God, we had to move to the high school today. Well, why? What happened? We had no heat or whatever. I mean, it's, you know, kids are talking about that stuff. So it's, it is something just that's there, but. So on, on your town meeting. Education yeah. question. Um, so I'm coming to the PTO meeting on Wednesday night. I can bring um, some materials about that. There, the League of Women Voters produced a citizen's guide to open town meeting, mm -hmm. which is on the town website. Okay. under the town clerk and town meeting page. Um, I have some copies of that. It's also on the League of Women Voters website okay. as well. And also the League does a warrant review and this it's the video is up on Harbor Media and on the League of Women Voters website um, and on their Facebook page that explains the town meeting process and especially this year and as a highlight um, Donna Smallwood the chair of the advisory committee uh, is the person giving the presentation mm -hmm. um, so I can go through all those that information on Wednesday I'm gonna do it briefly just mm -hmm. to get people started on it and yep. know where to go okay. um, and then um, either we can do it or we can ask the League of Women Voters to come and do an education to parents and, or any community members who want to get involved with the effort to do town meeting 101 so that you can understand the basics yeah. because believe me I was in your shoes once and I didn't know what was going on with town meeting I and it. that's why <laughs> actually yeah that's what, but but uh, that's why I actually joined the league for that reason and worked on that effort of what is town meeting? I, mean, yeah. I grew up, my father was the mayor of my town. I grew up in a mayor government. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. Um, it is it is its own unique government and takes some understanding. And right. so um, I totally get where you're coming from yeah. and I'd be glad to start sharing. It's hard that. too, because the Warren articles are so, the way they're written. I mean, yeah. you have to be an attorney to figure out what the heck, it, or maybe you guys understand <laughs> yeah. it. But, I just, I mean, as a regular person who is not involved yeah. in this stuff day to day, it makes my eyes cross trying yeah. to read it. And even by the time I, I, I don't even know what I'm reading. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I'm starting to get it because I'm spending more time now doing yeah. this type of stuff. But I mean, I know there's a lot of people like me that just are like, forget it. Yeah, this right. is too complicated. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we understand yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a great point. So thank you. And I, so I think we could put that under the what can I do part and maybe even just some of the links. Like, check, yeah, we can put all here, the links. You know, go you here to see. Yeah. yeah. So that's you a know, an, an interesting a, a point to make on the subject of the Warren articles being Greek. Uh, Y'all who have mailing addresses in Hingham will receive a Warren book two to three weeks before the uh, before town meeting, maybe a month before. And it'll not only have the Greek, which is difficult to understand, but it will have an explanation yeah. as to exactly what it means. Yeah. And that is very, very worthwhile. Yeah. All right. And, and the comments, the advisory committee writes those comments, and they go through great pain and detail to try their best to if it, make it understandable, but specifically say what they mean. They, you know, without intent or anything. So they should be read carefully. But they. They really, are, their their effort is just like, I want them to understand, but I need to make sure I say the right word because I don't want people to misinterpret what's being said. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really the key. The The comments are the key. The other languages, will you, you know, you, you don't have to watch those too much because those will happen at town meeting. But the comment is really t what's telling you what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they're intentionally written the way they're written and they do their best to really communicate and they want everybody to know exactly what they mean. So that's yeah, why they tend to be long. I, I, <coughs> total, I mean, that last year when I was like, oh, 
in feminists, this makes so much sense, but as it specifically yeah. relates to foster yeah. and getting, and getting no, I think, you know, the people, mm -hmm. this is important. Yeah. So. No, that's right. And maybe even a, we should probably also maybe even include a potential time commitment so people sort of understand what they're, because it could be a two night town meeting and people might be like, oh, I went Monday. What happened? What? Oh, wait, it didn't come up. So it's a people might need to know that it might be on multiple nights. If we're very lucky, this will stay as Article AA <laughs> and be the first one that gets up on the. Well, then it would be 27, <laughs> right? Exactly. But I'm After not sure. Hannah how that, Whiting, Lincoln, Lincoln Whiting. Yes, exactly. Um, but no, but that's a, those are those are great points because um, it's all about getting the bodies in the room. Something that's actually quite simple. When it comes to Tom, you yell yay or you <laughs> yell nay, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I know. All right, thank you so much. Um, all right, so anything else on community outreach? Uh, no, so All right, thank you. Said, though, if you could send me this um, and, and, yep. and to uh, Libby that. and yep. Carrie as well, and we'll set up a time to Do get that. back together so we can continue to work on it. Yeah. Would okay. you, could you help them out also, Liza, and send them the links to that? To oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, doing do that? I'll so send you all the, for them? the town page, and it's the same guide on the town page as the League of Women Voters guide, but I'll send you all that. Okay. Awesome. They do have thank a paper you. form, too, which is nice. Yeah, and I'll check that. if they're... I'll see how many copies. copies. Yeah, are. we've gone electronic, so um, we will see if we can find those. Do they offer? What's the deal with babysitting it for town meeting? Do they offer that at the buildings, or no. they do not? Okay. Well, so unless an organize, an, unless a group of people organize babysitting, it's not run by the town. Right. But there have Sorry. been cases where certain groups have. Organized like, like when we've done the school overrides before, there were parents that got their teenagers to provide babysitting, like in for the middle groups school, of kids, like school, yeah. at places. Okay, um, so that's something for we can't we won't promote that on our frequently asked questions. <laughs> yeah. But if someone in the audience wants to let people know that that's an option, Josh. <laughs> Josh Ross, uh, Wampatuck Road. So. Last meeting, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said, regardless of what happens in December, we're going to be ready to go with the foster. So that implies that there is going to be a plan in place between now and then to get something going after December X. Correct? Because then we talked about a special meeting in January, and Carlos was all excited about that. So has that changed? Are we still having a plan in place? Are people going to ask about it? What the answer is in December, we need to get moving on foster school. And that could include a special town meeting. We could have a special town meeting in January if necessary to decide whether or not the town, to put a Warren article, another Warren article in um, to release funds for the feasibility study. So yeah, so it's definitely still the plan. But part of it was that we were trying not to show our hand to the MSBA about the fact that that is a plan B. I mean, the, 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 the goal is to get the MSBA to help us finance this school because it's not just us who has to decide whether that warrant article can go in, right? There's also the advisory committee and the board of selectmen who have to and vote on And a two-thirds vote at town meeting and a meeting. ballot question at the, box, yeah. at the ballot box. But that's all out of your hands. Yes. There's stuff no. that you could, you guys as a committee can do from now until <coughs> decision day right. in order to be ready for decision day, regardless of which way to go, right? Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. And we but that's really just drafting. And stuff that's right, going to happen between now and I just want to make sure that's still. But right. Yeah, it is. But just to be clear, the, the things that we can do as a committee is sort of draft a Warren article and be talking to people, mm -hmm. but we can't get the people no, I Me too. Okay. I <laughs> um, and so also, our PTO meeting is the, the last one before town meeting will be wet Thursday. So if you're going to present, I would present then if you want to do the middle school then. So just because we don't do it every month, just information. The middle school yeah. PTO is the last one is before, is that's the last one before town meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Right. And Josh. So, I mean, you can bring these. I mean, they're. So my hesitancy of putting something in here right now is just because right now, today, we don't know what, we haven't decided what actions we're taking. Mm -hmm. 
that can be updated between right. now and December or now and January, but that's my only hesitancy of putting something in right. there at this moment. I just want to make sure that the stuff you guys We're talked not about yeah. last time oh, yeah. about right. doing plans and forming special committees and all that other stuff yep. is that's still changed. on the table. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kate, do you have anything for policy? No, at the moment I'm just collecting items. I haven't made any, I haven't set any date right now for me at meeting. Okay. So, nothing right. to report. Thank you. Um, the special ed subcommittee, we did not have a meeting this month because of um, various scheduling things, but I will be attending the CPAC meeting on Wednesday night. Um, and I'll just give them an update on the um, special ed budget um, and report back what I get at the pick up at the CPAC meeting. Um, long range planning, Ed, do you yeah, know? Long range planning, which was alluded to earlier, we'll be meeting on the 25th, which is uh, our next school committee meeting. And we'll be meeting at 5 30. Okay. 5 30 on Monday, March 25th. All right, thank you. Um, Salary negotiations? Um, we are meeting the week of the 18th. I think we're meeting twice because we're finalizing some recommendations on individual contracts um, that we had talked about in executive session. Um, so that's... That was March 18th? March 18th and March 21st. 21st. We couldn't fit it all on one day, so meeting multiple days. Um, all right, any liaison reports? Carrie? Um, uh, SNAP, Pizza Palooza is coming up on um, Wednesday, uh, March 27th from 5 to 7. Um, I think Dr. Gallo is going to be one of our judges, from what I understand, so we're going to judge the best. Yep. All right. Um, <laughs> to work. Yes, yeah, he is too. Um, and we have at least 10 pizzerias from town that are going to be participating this year, and Wahlburgers is as well, and Pupilos is for the first time. Oh, so, wow. Um, raffle item. So, yeah, it should be fun. Awesome. Um, at the high school? It'll be at the high school, yeah, okay. from 5 to 7. Um, our spring programs are uh, go going to be live soon, so that, that's going on. And I just wanted to mention, so Carlos and Libby and I went to the Division Three mask um, get-together last week. Um, it was really interesting. We talked a lot about the Chapter 70 uh, formula and um, kind of what the mask priorities are for um, advocating for that. They talked about the Day on the Hill, which is May uh, 1st, and I'm, I'm planning to go to that, I think. Or, I am. Yeah, and I think Carlos is too. Um, and they said it's a great opportunity to kind of check in with your legislators and talk about what your priorities are. Um, but they are advocating, there are a number of bills on the table, but they're advocating um, to cover special education and employment benefits um, if, the, if the formula is redone to make sure that those things are more accurate than in the old formula. Um, and they're supporting accountability, but they don't want it to be punitive and kind of put, refocus it on what's best for the children and the teachers. So it was, it was very, it was really interesting. My head hurt at the end, <laughs> but, it was, but it was, yeah, it was great. It was awesome. All right, thank you. Thanks for going to that. Um, Libby, do you have any? Hef? I know they have their um, um, Paragon Boardwalk fundraiser is on Friday, March 29th. All right. Be a lot Tickets are on sale now, I believe, because mm -hmm. I got my mm -hmm. invitation today. Mm -hmm. um, Ed, do you have anything, Warren articles or anything? No, nope. not that Warren article, but. <laughs> um, any liaison reports? No. Nope. Anything else other than Foster? Uh, Foster <coughs> School Council is Wednesday morning, which I will go to, and then the PTO meeting is at night. So okay. All right. But that's it. Um, I just have a CPAC. I will be there on Wednesday. I'll report back um, anything from that meeting. And do you have anything else, Dr. Gallo? Um, no. In your uh, packet, there are uh, two letters. Um, one to Melissa Smith. Um, principal at Plymouth River, and the other one on the other side uh, actually is to Mary Eastwood at South, and they are two of the schools of the 57 uh, schools that were um, named as uh, uh, distinguished schools, 
and will be honored at the State House coming up on June 7th, I think it is. Um, there was, uh, many years ago, a uh, high school was honored in that way and a number of us went to, uh, to the ceremony. And um, this year there are only 57 schools, not districts, but schools, and uh, two of them are Hingham schools. And um, so those two events will be on the 7th. And They'll be putting together a delegation of uh, um, people to go with them to see them uh, be so honored. And um, I would also say that in addition to these two schools that were that were honored, um, the Foster School was at the 90, 99th percentile, I believe. So it was a very positive year for for all of our schools, actually. But. Um, so some of you may be invited to join you know, on that day and um, take a trip to the state. Did you I got to the go last time um, when South School and Plymouth, <laughs> well, when they were both honored, I guess it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a nice, it's a nice day, nice, happy day. Yeah. Right. So, so anyway, when you see that these letters came, they are they are from the commissioner and. They just came the other day, so I thought I would include them in this uh, in this packet. And let's see what else is there. Uh, there's um, Katie and um, Doug's um, maintenance lists for uh, February completed <coughs> um, projects and um, March anticipated projects, and a lot of preventive maintenance in there, and uh, a number of things at the high school um, that um, we found out about because. A late, really late, in terms of planning for preventive maintenance, uh, because nobody said anything. Uh, these were, weren't things that showed up on uh, a budget list, uh, capital list, any of those things. And then, and yet, you know, you'd hear people say things like, "Well, you know, that's been a long time. Well, you know, it would be an even longer time if you don't speak up." And so, um, we need to. For people to, if you're unhappy about something, that something isn't working well, and that we can do something about it, there's not a reason not to do. We have a, a good maintenance budget, and um, we have good workers, and so we shouldn't be uh, suffering in science when there are things that we can do something about. So um, there are several things of that sort that are that are in there, and one of them. I'm not surprised, but people in this room may be surprised because I think everybody thinks that everything that's wrong is wrong at Foster, and, and really, a number of the things that are there, like uneven temperatures and so on, they're everywhere and they pop up at different times. And so, um, that that's something that we became aware of a year ago in September, actually, when we were um, having. The uh, the visit, the accreditation visit from the England Association, and and there were some things that were mentioned, not many, but uh, just lightly mentioned. And in fact, not everybody in the room even knew what even even the uh, the uh, students in the school and some of the staff didn't know what they were talking about, and we never did find out what they were talking about. But there were some maintenance folks in the in the building a couple of weeks ago and, you know, they got a comment, um, not too kindly a comment, like, well, this has been like this for a long time. Well, when were you going to tell somebody about it? And so, so they um, put together the plans to do uh, a number of those things, which in the grand scheme of things aren't huge things, but uh, untold stories never, you know, see the light of day. So, so anyway, that's, um, Another very positive story overall in terms of managing equipment and managing um, some of the facilities that are the most problematic to us in terms of day to day operation, and that often is around heating and ventilating, ventilation and all of the equipment that goes with that. that that's a common thing to be wrong in, uh, in, a, lot of, in a lot of places. So. That report comes once a month, and uh, and what is this one? It's the collaborative. Oh, the collaborative. So once a, um, 
every time we have a board meeting of the collaborative and that happens six times a year unless there's some special event that we also have to include and by law a number of years ago um, the uh, an update of the enrollment and the budget status needs to be sent back to the school committees in the um, membership towns whenever we have a board meeting so we had a board meeting last Friday and uh, this is the information about uh, about that and uh, might particularly be of interest to the uh, special ed subcommittee um, other than that it's just FYI and we're in good shape financially um, and the collaborative has a new uh, new director and uh, um, program director that's a, that's a new ro role mm -hmm. so it's a partnership team and they're both uh, um, folks that have worked at the collaborative for a long time and they were moved into the opening that was created by uh, Hank Perrin's retirement after 10 or so years at the collaborative. I think that's it. All right. Thank you very much. That is the end of the packet. So um, unless anyone has anything else, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Okay, we'll make sure. a motion. I'll second. And Libby will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. I'm going to bang that a little harder. <laughs>